Hey, what's up, guys? I'm going to show you a couple uh, different ways to do it yourself on how you can fix your furnace. Uh, it's that time of year, and a lot of people have having trouble with their furnaces uh, due for maintenance, and honestly, uh, it's just sometimes not in the budget. Uh, first thing, um, you want to always check your thermostat. Most thermostats do run off batteries. In this case, there was a screw in the bottom, and then it actually just lifts off. And it's always good to change your batteries because it can mess the thermostat. And I last year I had mine, uh, actually it wouldn't work at all. And then I put new batteries in and bam, uh, issue fixed. So that's the first thing. The second thing you want to do is to restart your furnace, which I'll show you here in a second. But before you do that, you actually want to turn your thermostat all the way down. Okay, now I'm down here in my basement. Uh, my furnace isn't quite too old. You can tell it's uh, pretty dirty. Uh, a couple things you want to do. Uh, if your furnace is not working or it's uh, not you know, starting up as it should, change your air filter uh, to start off. You can see mine is dirty as all hell. And also, if you have ventilation, uh, the vents and stuff in your house, you want to make sure that there's no like clothes on them or hampers or that you've moved anything in them. And I'm just going to show you a couple different things to check. You can see right here, I pulled off the doors already. Uh, they just lift off. Now before you take off the doors, I kind of want to go ahead and look for a power switch. You see mine's right here. It's an on off. And then if you look here, here is where your gas is. And a lot of these are the same, like I said. So if you've looked at yours, it's probably very similar. And you see I have it switched off. It just turns down and switches to on. So that's your gas line, okay? And before you start working on anything, you probably want to turn this off. Now, if your fans aren't kicking on at all, most uh, furnaces have this little safety switch right here where if the cover's not on it or just off it a little bit, let me show you what I mean here. And I actually can't, it's not going to turn on right now because what I've done is I pulled out the igniter because I was getting gas and I could smell gas, but there was no flames, which I'm going to talk about here in a second, but it could be an easy fix. You can see I have some tape here. Uh, if that door is lifted even a little bit, it will automatically shut off your furnace. So that's the first thing you can check is that the doors... Uh, holding that closed completely um, and moving on before I move on I'm gonna go ahead and uh, shut this power back off and also just turn the gas off to reset it what you're gonna do is basically do what I just did turn that off turn the gas off and you're wait about five minutes for all the you know gas and stuff to clear out and you're gonna go ahead and turn this back on and turn that back on and go ahead and close the panel door. Right now, when I hold this down, it's not starting because I pulled out the igniter, which I was talking about. I'm sorry if my vocabulary isn't right on. Now, the first thing I can tell you firsthand is that these are very brittle. And I actually, was as I was walking down the stairs, I dropped the older one. But you can see it kind of fits like this. Try to kind of put it back together. It's very, very brittle. And in this case, I had to get a new one because mine wasn't working. That's basically what it looks like here. It was about $40. And if they're the same kind of plug, I'm going to pull out the new one. If it's the same kind of plug, this is off like a electric dryer. And you can see, I'll get it out of the package here in a second. And that basically goes, let me get you, zoom out here. That's going to go right there okay so I went ahead and got the new one out this is what your igniter is gonna be because a lot of them aren't pilot lights anymore you don't really light by hand and I don't suggest really lighting them by hand either um, now just be very very careful because this part right here is very very sensitive as you can see my old one broke and a dead giveaway is right there you see that white you can see that white right there um, that's definitely an indicator that your igniter is out. 
So these are very brittle. Uh, th like I said, this one came, uh, I just got from the parts store, it's about $35, $40. And they have the same plugs. And we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put that right there. And I'll show you what that looks like. I'm gonna have to remove the, uh, the mount, that metal mount bracket. Uh, and most, if you have a nut driver or a small socket set, that would work good. In this case, I'm just using some pliers. So I'm going to go ahead and switch that off and put it back in real quick. Well, I'll be damned. I just broke uh, the new one, putting the new one on there. These things are super sensitive. What a pain in the ass. Be right back. All right, guys. I went back, and now I'm on my second uh, igniter here. So I cannot express to you how fragile these are. When you go to put it back in, I'm gonna be putting it right there on that hole. And that's that part right there is gonna slide in there and this part is gonna sit behind it all. And I'm gonna put the camera down just because I not want to break it again. I'm only at about seventy dollars. Uh to call a uh repair man would probably cost more than that. So I'm gonna set this down and install it real quick and then I'll show you uh what to do from there. Okay. So you can see here now that was the the nut I just put in there, uh, and you can see the igniter now, the bottom part, the ceramic part is just kind of sitting there, and I'll go ahead and plug that back in. Okay, so I got the connectors back in there. Now there's another thing here, this is an electric, basically it starts the flame on itself, so there's no like pilot light, um, and in this case, I'm not exactly sure what they're called. They're like a flame type sensor, but if you can see it right there, that is the flame sensor. And there's also like a gas version of that, which is a uh, thermocouple. Well, those can get corroded, and I'm just gonna pull this out real quick. And it comes in handy to have a nut driver, or like I said, a pair of pliers. This part isn't as breakable right here, but you see it's just one screw. And then this slides out. And you can take a look at it. Now this is for, this is for instance, say if your heat turns on and then it turns off and you can tell the heat is working. But this is basically like a thermometer. So uh, if it's reading wrong, it might keep shutting your furnace off. So what you can do is just get some real fine sandpaper and go ahead and clean this off. And if you have a... Uh, thermocouple this might be like a copper it's gonna have copper uh, coming to it in this case it's electrical so this sensor uh, could be the problem as well so that's one more thing you can check out um, and that is located you can see I have the uh, the the burners there where the gas come out of and you just look up right there to the left and you can see it fits right here in this hole and this is basically what it looks like. So I'll go ahead and put that back in there. Okay, I went ahead and uh, put that sensor, uh, just screwed it back in there. Um, and as you can see, when I, we look down here, I have took off this plate right here. Uh, it sits like this, and usually it's one or two screws. And I just simply remove that. And as you can see, when you look down here, you'll see an LED light. Now, when worse comes to worse, and you've tried to restart your furnace, and you've checked out your thermocouple, and you've also, if you're not getting flame, replaced your uh, igniter here, um, you can come down here and you can start your furnace with this panel off. Uh, you just want to make sure that nothing can get sucked into your bigger fan, um, and that you know you just just be safe about it. And basically this LED will light up a code. It might be one blink, two blinks, three blinks, four blinks, five blinks. And it can tell you a better idea of what is actually going bad. And uh, I'll try to post a link down in the bottom of this video to show you uh, what those codes mean. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and run through this furnace now. This thing should be fixed. Um, I'm really crossing my fingers. So it's been longer than five minutes. So this is basically doing a reset. Uh, what I'm going to do first is turn on my gas and then I'm going to go ahead and flip on uh, that starting switch. And as long as we're talking about that right now, I want to show you there is a fuse. These don't usually blow, but if they do, 
Um, see, for instance, mine's glass. Well, I pulled that sucker out the other day, and I got electrocuted like all hell. So make sure that uh, you're just touching the glass because uh, that thing, that thing will shock you. So that's the only fuse that, though, like I said, if your furnace is working and turning on, that's not going to be the problem anyway. And the other thing you might want to check down here. Uh, there's also a fuse. You can see it's that purple one right there, and that fuse is good. But uh, if those fuses are popped, it's probably that's probably uh, going to be your problem. And as long as we're down here, um, these are capacitors. Usually, you might not want to mess with these, but these capacitors, you can tell if they're blown uh, because the tops will explode on them. You can see there's kind of like a cross K. Well, those tops... Those tops will explode outwards, and they'll kind of have a bubble on them. So that could be a problem, too. In this case, mine are fine. So like I said, I'm going to go ahead and start this up, uh, and let's see if this took care of the problem. And I'm just going to use the safety lever. Like I said, this is the door panel, uh, so I'm just going to say that I'm closing it. And you see the bottom will kick on. suck that air filter right to it so it's good to have those in place too so that's probably not a smart idea that I have it like that and I'm not an expert I'm just trying to help you guys troubleshoot your furnace uh, the best that I know how and just save you guys some money and we'll see if it's gonna start up here This smaller, this fan at the bottom will start first, then this little one should kick on, and that's where the gas should be uh, released, and then the starter should automatically start that down there. And as you can see, the upper fan started. And as you can see, my uh, new thermostat heating element is working. It was not even glowing before. And there you can see take off. Woohoo! Sweet. Well, all around, I saved myself probably $150 or so. Everything's to seem to be working. Like I said before, if your furnace is getting this far and then shutting off, check that heating element located right down there which I pulled off that has the stick so if this video helped you out guys uh, give it a thumbs up if you have any other questions that I can think of uh, or try to help you with I can answer it uh, this was a carrier crusader furnace but like I said a lot of the setups are almost identical and some are even interchangeable so that's it thanks for watching